Thank you, Stephen. Well, if any of you did get a Christmas card for me and Dodie and you didn't recognize the handwriting on it, <laughs> our thoughts were there. Uh, this one is called Eyes on the Prize. A lot of these are called Eyes on the Prize. Yeah. A flashlight. I think all my flashlights okay. are upstairs. I got one. <laughs> and this is a translation of, from the French of the sonnet that Rimbaud and Verlaine wrote together. Oh, that's great. They only wrote that, that one poem. No, they wrote two poems. One of them is a sonnet. Sonnet, on, sonnet to the asshole. <laughs> no, I got one. And I'm putting it into English. Shadowed, unshadowed, purple and pink, like the Elizabethan ruffle, or the truffle of the lower Ardennes. <laughs> Papery thin like a susurrus cloud. It is your asshole, in cahoots, better yet, hand in glove, with the white mountains of your ass cheeks. It lies between them in the shadow of the precipice. Like that Kylie record. <laughs> Cuddled between them like the baby in the bed between mom and dad. Moist as baby, cloud-like, uniformed, the doctor's frown. The ceiling looms looking down at the anus that violet-eyed cries against the hot wind, onion-scented Sirocco. They were about to leave for, you know, the desert. <laughs> Liz Taylor crying when the Mexican boys eat her cousin who's filleting them. They just swallow him up, spitting out the gristle of his teeth, his gristle, his ammonia, his tears, to lose themselves when the darkness calls them. The shadow of the American dream. A man should know his own ass, doctor. Moncoul will always expect something more than what it gets. Woo! <laughs> I know there's a few, little bit more of this. There's two more lines. Moncoul will expire of rage like the newborn screaming in the desert. And we will be reviled by history for what we failed to do in the commune. <laughs> Above the vultures creak and pivot, their eyes on the prize. As mon cool brûle au fou. <laughs> the shutter snaps once, twice, in western desert air, then falls silent, sated. I'd read the original in French, but you all know it. <laughs> This one's called Eyes on the Prize, too. <laughs> <laughs> Do any of you know that song, San Francisco, by the French James Taylor, Maxime Le Forestier? Sing it. Do you know it, Francois? It's from the, the 70s. Heart. Yeah. <laughs> it, it made a billion French people come to San Francisco. Still does. <laughs> nice. So this is my version of that. <laughs> San Francisco, blue house tucked into the hill, funny beauties make music, act out. Liam and Ginger, Ron and Chuck, Bob, Lisa and Luke. They were in the vanguard as slowly I learned how to make it. An ono social being, tongue-tied, a nascent top when I came here blue house grew out from seven hills in my future AIDS and language poetry social justice a job that lasted like Bartleby to free my mind with my eyes on the prize to pay the rent Najon dans la bruyard swimming in the fog Maxime Le Forestier you were here for just one month and you like Totally got it. <laughs> San Francisco, up like a match, hiding your face in your armpit, alone in a corporate town. But I had no idea. I just saw that cable car, and I was like, Daddy, buy me that. <laughs> and Dodie, Dodie Bellamy, <laughs> the femme divine, upon whose coattails I hooked my stars oh, together. Geez like one of those old couples we used to see, Jess and Duncan, George and Mary Oppen, Simone and Etel, Lisa and Luke, 
Sylvia, attendez-moi. <laughs> <laughs> Um, this is kind of like an obituary piece that I wrote for the, uh, the blogger, the artist, Mark Aguhar, who lived in Chicago. He kind of tells the story. When I was young, there was a famous novel, Love Story, later a movie with Ali McGraw and Ryan O'Neill that begins, what can you say about a 25-year-old girl that died? And it ends, love means never having to say you're sorry. I thought of both when I was watching Facebook, and suddenly it, it, it sprouted inexplicably with images of Mark, drawings, videos, all of which I nodded in, added an appreciation, and then unsettlingly it began to dawn on me, this much Mark Aguhar isn't normal on Facebook. <laughs> I don't know about you, but that's how I find out how, who's died, you know, especially your friends. The left side of my brain was telling me that a 25-year-old girl had died and there would be nothing one could really say except that love means never having to say you're sorry. Oh, maybe she was 24, but you know. Like Allie McGraw, she was far too young and fabulous and sharp-witted to go beyond us into the Valley of the Dolls. I met her as a visiting artist on a studio visit at UIC. And she showed me work in progress, a bit tentatively, I thought, like one inured to being dismissed or ignored. And as she brought forth net blouses or tulle scarves, I kept wondering, when is the artwork going to appear? I only have an hour. I did see drawings and videos, but soon enough it sunk in. All of this was all of a piece. It wasn't going to be categorically arranged according to some hierarchy of value dictated by the market. That's when the work got interesting for me. I'm slow, and she was lightning quick, and I saw her face go impassive as a Helmut Newton, yet wincing with pity. I guess she was always, like Ally McGraw, going to be surrounded by guys dumber than she was. <laughs> <laughs> On the last day of art school, Mark jumped out the window of her studio and died. Secret Life of Plants. This was the poem that I wrote, and they put it up on the wall at Market Street. I hope some of you saw the big mural that was in front of Old Navy in June for the Gay Pride Month. They wanted me to write about gay, and they wanted it to be inoffensive to anybody. <laughs> As all of you would, I went for plants <laughs> before we knew we were gay, before we were boys or girls or gender in flux continual, a kaleidoscope, the plants knew, <laughs> deep in their underground, from out of the earth they soared, knowing our fates whose lips my lips have hungered for, the plants could tell. The sycamores, strawberry vines, the poppies, the native plants of San Francisco. When earth meets and embraces the air and the rain, a love is born, a terrible love, a love even Earthworms understand. Reach for my hand in our backyard, in the shade of the sequoia. Hear it whisper our names in the ragged dawn of our city. I think I have just two more. Well, this one's very short. And it's called Snapchat. <laughs> <laughs> and it's for Andrew Durbin. He showed me what Snapchat was and how it just, just you know, it's there and it's done. <laughs> Can I make my little voice be heard in the tweaky village of the Castro? For, for you, I learned how to text. For you, I received a Snapchat picture of you and in five seconds saw it fade away like 
all the beautiful things of the world. Table of the Elements, and it's to honor Marc de Souvera, the sculptor who has these eight gigantic, massive sculptures. Maybe you've seen them out in Chrissy Field right now, and he's celebrating his 80th birthday. So I was like, I don't know how to write about this stuff, but I tried. <laughs> it was the elements he got right. The strangeness of the new land, its fuzzy things, called trees, the spice in the air the thick avocado paste of novelty, and simultaneously a war to win. Does it ever leave you that feeling of having been taken hostage by the left, hostage by the right, sworn to vassalage by your secret tutor to the undying borders of the nation state, now dry off the elements of tin, mercury, iron, oxygen, Gold, I was sleeping on a country lawn, eyes wet with dew, my trousers soaked, my thighs cold, and a tall animal approacheth, licketh my face clean of soil. It is the salt of tears for your country, said the wise platonic antelope. Then down red clay track he raced like a son of a bitch. Like Don Draper, <laughs> like Anna Madrigal in the Tales of the City, I dreamed of my youth as an awkward teen raised up in a brothel. My brother dead, the woman, the women I loved lying to me, their silk dresses, their pale pink store-bought slips, but the elements they got right. In my dreams they slept and tossed, as up to the star-torn skies we were winning a war against death. I played piano in the parlor to entertain my dad, as he cracked his knuckles against his muscles. Did this happen, I cried, when I awoke? Or was it just the historical materiality of the Cold War that impressed me like Play-Doh? I'm sorry, Kevin, my father said. You mean Play-Doh, do you not? The name of the Sal Minio character in Rebel Without a Clause, <laughs> who lied to you, who wanted James Dean and Natalie Wood as his parents, the philosopher king with the shadows on the cave? Fuck no, I mean Play-Doh, Dad. That gooey yellow clay with salty scent that coats one's nostrils like living, that just peels off, that you can put on newspaper, and it mirrors the news. <laughs> Crying the salt of tears for my country, you could throw it, and it would stick to the wall. <laughs> like when pasta is done, said my dad, as in dreams the dead come and animate your bones once again. Down raced the wise antelope, down the red track. Brother dear, I cried, only to be told that the antelope is not a deer, nor is she my brother. Down she raced like a mad thing, whips a froth with delight. I stood by myself in my representation. There were two of me, like Plato's concept of me and my shadow. And someday, I'll be a perfected version of that sorry-ass thing I see in my mirror, speculating and gesticulating with bony fingers and my Adam's apple swallowing up and down, the sign of the liar in a panic, in the platonic mix of flour, water, boric acid, 
mineral oil. These are the elements of Plato. Mm -hmm. And salt, my birthright, my dream right, my clay, yellow clay. Thank you. Mm -hmm.